Hello, this is Palico Patch, and welcome back to another episode of A House of Many Doors. In the last episode, it was a bit of a reedy episode, although a lot did happen. We managed to finally, finally, finally have enough money to be able to upgrade our Kinetopede. We've got better legs, we've got a better engine, and we've got two extra guns. I now feel a lot more confident in going into battle. So, with that being said, we did decide at the end of the last episode we would be heading to the let me get this right because compass points are rubbish for me west and then north just to discover a few extra extra cities and also we need to find where this passenger wants to go he is taking up a little bit of weight not a lot but a little bit and uh, we could also do is selling some of these things i mean my senior passenger where where's he going doesn't say that's fine we'll be we'll be fine i'm sure it's around here somewhere he says Nah, should have paid more attention. We'll find it. It's fine. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, we've got a little bit of space in our cargo hold now. We're in a much better position to be taking battles. So if we see any pirates, which we encountered on the on the last one, or was it the one before that, I, I feel much happier in trying to take them on now. Uh, before we do that, though, before we leave, I am going to use up the rest of my monies to try and hire some better people for our crew. Uh, before we do that though, I'm just going to repair the hall if we are going to go into battle and uh, then we're going to advertise for a new crew member. Do I pull up a poster? Just try it once more or do I go straight for the advertisement in the newspaper? Let's do a poster. No response. Okay. And again. Nothing at all. Fine. So let's do an advertisement. Here we go. So, Char Dvetsdek she has cropped red hair and singed eyebrows and pushes a cart full of clinking glass vials wherever she goes. She's an alchemist, she tells you, and her elixirs are be heal better than any surgery. Her eyes have all the telltale tinge of darkness that gives away a godsmoke addict. Great. So she has six guts and four grit. So that's a definite option. Uh, then we have... Oh... Ransack Morton, covered in scars with an ear missing from a recent spell in prison. He was a vicious pirate and murderer, he tells you cheerfully, but he's seen the error of his ways. Now he plans to publish his memoirs, but first he needs to have some non-murderous adventures. Well, we're going to go take on some pirates. And he has quite a bit of grit and Esoterica is, is in our favour, I think. You know what? No, we're going we're gonna to take on the surgeon, simply because... Rotherford is good uh, good for. He's, he's all been done. So we'll take her on. That'll be a, a chat we have in a second. And uh, we're heading towards the city of Bridges, it would appear. So, before we go any further, let's have a quick look-see. Oh, that's where Hextall is. Oh, bugger. We're going in the wrong direction. Oh, we need to write a report on the city of Engines, which is below us. Uh, I mean, I was going to go for the penguin, but seeing, seeing as this is this, I think it might be w worth going to the City of Bridges, looping around to the City of Engines, cutting across to Hextall, and then, well, see where else we, we can go after that, I guess. Go to the for Beta Quinn and delve into the stupid faction baths, I guess. Go and have a bath. So, oh, is he coming for me? You know what? I'm going to stand here because I'm quite happy with my setup now. If you want to come and attack us, that's fine. That's fine. The bandit Kinetopede is draped in trophies and badly fitting armor plates, doubtless looted from other victims. They demand money and they're not polite about it. The captain makes inappropriate intimations regarding your genealogy. Bastard. I'm not going to take it this time. I'm going to refuse to pay. And we're going to have our first proper combat experience. So... Who do they have? We have four turns. We have lots of guns. Lots and lots of guns. I mean, do we just go for it? Do we go for outright destruction? If we aim, because they have an engine, one gun, and a thug, supposedly, along with the light bearer. So where's, this, where's their driver? Hey-ho, that's not my problem okay so your crew can gain wounds or even die in combat wounds heal slowly over time 
Upper deck members have a chance to be only incapacitated in combat rather than killed. Lower deck crew members will always just die. Death is permanent. That's all right. Let's have a go at this. So we're going to aim at the light bearer simply because that seems to be where there are more people staged at the moment. And we'll move back one as well. Can I move back one? Can I move back one? Retreat. Retreat one. Here we go. Here we go. Boom! Boom! Oh, we got two hits. What me? Ow. Uh, I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, they, they took a good hit. We knocked uh, almost a third off, the, off their health. That's the word I'm looking for. Let's try that again. Let's try it again. So you... Do we aim at their gun? Take out their gun? No, they've only got one gunner. That probably makes more sense. So there's three of them. And... Do I just wait it out? I mean, they're going to repair that. That's fine. They're going for our engine. Uh, I'm not good, actually. I'm maimed. I'm maimed, supposedly. That, that can't be good. Where's my surgeon? Uh, everyone's okay at the moment. I'm, do, I mean, can I send myself to the surgeon? That's probably a good thing. Hopefully, I'll heal up over time. So, do you think? Here we go. Here we go. Hit him. Hit him. Boom, boom, boom. Almost. Ow. That's fine. That's fine. So, they're only going to get one more go at us. So, let's move forward a bit. Wow, we moved forward quite a bit. So, we'll go one, two, and then back on the heart light. Because why not? Here we go. Yeah, they're still moving away from us. As long as we take the gun out, we're going to be laughing. Right, so the gun is out. They missed. Even better. So we can go in for the kill now. So let's move up two. And then we shall keep aiming for the heart light, I guess. Yeah, it's still moving away from us. Oh, the light is out. That's good. That's good. They can't have much left. No. Uh, so let's just go out and out for the engine. I don't think this is going to end well for them, in all fairness. And we'll end our turn. Here we go. Boom! Our first kill! Awesome! Your artillery tears the enemy Kineta Peter ribbons. Plumes of ash and smoke stretch to the ceiling. Time to see if there's anything left to salvage. You live to fight again because we won. You pick amongst the blackened remains. Surely something has survived, but no. You root through the wreckage and charred bones and find nothing. As you turn to leave, you hear a hoarse voice calling for help. The helpless ghoul trapped in rubble almost sobs with relief when pulled three. So we have a ghoul prisoner and we've gained a war story. Nice. Tybalt approaches you after the battle. The wreckage of the enemy vehicle sprawls before you like the guts of some disembowelled iron, iron god. Ty Bolt approaches you with two wide eyes, clutching his helmet with shaking hands. That was horrible, he whispers. I never, I never. He pauses, then holds his helmet up to his face like a bucket and is violently sick into it. What a pussy! You're supposed to be our guard captain. You're supposed to be our guard captain. I mean, what the hell? Uh, okay, well... You know what? I'm going to stick to the original plan. We're going to go into the City of Bridges. So along, uh, across for four. We are a lot quicker, aren't we? Oh, wow. Get around that properly. And the hall's taking a little bit of a bashing. Oh, and stuff's going on as well. What's going on? He's not happy. So he's gangly and nervous and uncomfortable in his own skin. Uh, and Tybalt knocks on your door with his hat in his hands. Hopefully it's been clean since you last spoke with him. I'm sorry about earlier, he says, putting the helmet slowly back on his head. I've never been in a real fight before. Never seen people, well, you know, die. 
He shudders. I might not be cut out for this job, but I'm here now, aren't I? I wondered if you could give me a second chance. Why did you become a guard captain in the first place? He's clearly not as experienced as he pretended to be. You better clean up your act soon. There's no room on this kinetic piece for dead weight. It'll take some time to learn the ropes. No need to make him any more anxious than he already is. Or fire him on the spot. Um, let's ask him why he did it in the first place, I suppose. No reason, just wanted to. Tybot looks everywhere except your eyes. My father doesn't know where I am. He'll have sent his men out looking for me, probably. Well, better clean up your act then, son. Understood, he gulps audibly. I'll do everything I can to protect you. In fact, he gets down on one knee, draws his sabre and places it at your feet. I swear to you on all the sanctioned that I'll lay down my life for you if I have to. Uh, I'm going to reject his oath. Let's not go crazy. You've gone from one extreme to another, tie Bolt. That's, you know, that's, that's a very immature way of looking at things. I just want you to work, that's all. That's all I ask. Do your job. Oh, Tybalt stares up at you, mouth twisting. I'm a balsamic, you know. Our family have been respected in the city of Keys for hundreds of years. It's not a common thing to have someone like me in your service. I think you should think about that and maybe respect it more. He stands up without another word, sheathing his sword and marches off down the corridor. You know what, son? You're being replaced as soon as we can. As soon as we can. We've got old Christ got loads of apprehensions. Uh, okay, so... I don't know you, and we're not at full health, so I'm not going to go for you just yet. I do, though, want to be able to... I think we're going just as quick at them now. There's no way they're going to catch us. I do want to upgrade some people in a second. Once we uh, get rid of all these bloody scorpions. Let's try and lose them around these bits. Can we get them trapped on a rock? Well, almost. Almost. I don't think there's purple missiles or anything to worry about now, actually, either. I mean, they keep coming at me. They're, they're pink like they're uh, an action. I'm just not in a fit state to be taking them on. Am I across enough? I am. I need to be going down south. They keep coming up. I think I'm I'm needed to attack one of these. So what's going on? A shade core scorpiopede. It glides towards you, sleek and deadly, flying the black apple flag of the shade core enforcers. These soldiers belong to one of the most feared mercenary guilds in the house. They mostly work for the consortium, breaking the knees of or schools of debtors and ruthlessly exterminating bandits foolish enough to ambush a protected kinetopede. Why would they come after you? The radio coughs into life. Patch, says the cracking voice. Took a lot of work to track you down. Hand over Tybalt. His father wants him back. Right. Um, well, I'm, he, he's not in my good book, so I'm going to be completely honest. So let's call him up first. Trouble Captain, Tybalt attempts to swing his rifle into his hands, but the strap knocks off his helmet and gets caught in his hair. When you explain the situation to him, he turns pale. When my father comes for me? Oh no, oh no, 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 oh gods! He falls against the wall and slides to the floor, his face in his hands. Don't let them take me back, he begs. My father will be so angry, he'll put me in the thin place again. Uh... You know what? You know what? You're gone, son. That's what we like to hear. Time about whales in dismay. The enforcers fan through your kinetopede, shoving their rifles under the chins of your crew. Their faces are utterly hidden behind dark visors. A single wrong move and half your crew will be dead in an instant. Glad we could get this done without needless bloodshed. Here, worm. The enforcer's captain lifts his visor to reveal a heavily scarred knuckle of a face. He grabs Tybalt's collar and pulls him close. I ran away when I was little too, but my daddy was not one of the richest men in the city of Keys. Your daddy is, and he is very upset. They haul Tybalt back to their Scorpiopede. And that's the last you ever see of him. Oh well, never mind. <laughs> As you can tell, I'm very upset. The Scorpiopede vanishes into the dark. Your crew are muttering to each other. They don't like seeing one of their own sold out. So he's permanently left the crew. That's fine by me. Uh, lost some sanity. Uh, we have got 
apprehensions though. So my guard captain is upset by my actions, which is minus two. My light bearer is upset, and so is my record keeper. Tyvat will be returned to his father. It's for the best. It is. He's crap. He's a crap, 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 crap. Guard. That's what we're looking for. <coughs> Excuse me. And now we're into the city of bridges. So, a crisscrossing network of bridges, each groaning under the weight of hundreds of buildings straddling a measureless abyss. Effluence from the higher bridges falls like rain on those below. So we can rest and recover. Our sanity is alright. All I want to do, if possible, is repair my hull. It's going to cost me 105 guineas. That's fine. We can visit Basilmoth. Requires sellable information. I mean, we might have something he likes. So we are looking for... What are we looking for? Terrible secret, scandalous gossip. No. Can't believe we got none of that. One of those. One of those. That's no good. Are they all going to buy the same? Unsettling conjecture and dread machinations they are, aren't they? And we can sell the evidence to the governor. You know what? No. No. Uh, we could gather some news. That's fine by me. Eli crossing in danger of collapse. The upper scrub has broken some of their members out of prison. Undergangs blame for arson on Brabazon Bridge. Okie dokie. Uh, Wonder the bridges. Advertise a new crew member. And that's about it. Let's uh, let's wander the bridges, I guess, before we go uh, looking for a new crew member. The consortium relies on mercenaries to guard its trade routes, and competition over a contract is fierce. You're minding your own business on Rose Pike Bridge when an honest-to-goodness artillery shell blows the roof from the building behind you. Choking on dust and smoke, you die behind a nearby grocery stall, where a young woman and her son are already cowering. We've done this already. What do we want to do? So we waited last time and then we legged it. Our spirit isn't good, so let's wait and watch. And then let's start taking notes, because last time we ran for it. The Shade Corps enforcers are black armoured from head to foot, silent soldier silhouettes. The sons of vermin roar and belch and yell obscenities. Then they all kill each other. Oh, okay. A Penny Dreadful would describe acrobatics, elegance, a choreographed fight scene. But in reality, it's an unhappy chaos of stamping and screaming and vomit. Eventually, the Sons of Vermin are driven to retreat, grapnelling or grapnelling back up to their blimp in disarray. By that time, you filled your notebook from cover to cover. So we've got a lurid tale, a war story, and a thrilling yarn. Awesome. That was uh, worth doing, as they say. So let's uh, advertise a new crew member. We could contact an old friend, recruit a crew member with whom we formed a bond. Uh, that, um, that's going to be Rotherford, isn't it? And we don't want him. So, let's put up a poster. No. Do it again. Chief Engineer. We don't have a Chief Engineer. Uh, she's from the City of Masks, of course. And the elaborate feline visage never leaves her face. You don't know how many generations of intellect are trapped in the mask. And you're not sure you want to know. Like all masks, she, she, she's sure to have countless secret agendas. Well, let's do it. Why not? And uh, on that note, I think... I mean, I, I could take on a bounty, but I don't know if I'm going to be any good at it. I'm quite scared. Quite, quite scared. Fuel is okay. Fortune Hall. Anything to sell? Nope. A uh, very private procurer. We have a memory box. Empty, of course. Let's sell that. Get rid of it. Uh, then the Grand Abattoir. Nothing there. That's alright. We got rid of something, I suppose. Uh, cargo is doing alright at the moment. It'd be nice to be able to get rid of some of these things, though. Ghoul Prisoner. Yeah, I'm sure we have to do something for him at some point. But for here, we are done, so let us go. I think we're going south, aren't we? 
Yes, yeah, so we're going south three and then east three. East, no, south four, east two. Is that right? South and east, that's how we're going. We're definitely going three south. So we haven't got a guard captain. I don't think we're missing out on much in all fairness. He was a bit of a wimp all in all. Are you coming for me? You are? All right, then. Let's, let's do this. Let's do this. Refuse to pay. I'm happy to take on the small ones. Uh, and this time, I'm going to be concentrating on the gun first. If they can't shoot, they can't hurt us. Two, three, and end our turn. Here we go. Two hits, and the engineers are in. What are you doing? Oh. Okay. Uh, in which case, let's send you to my gun, and then just keep aiming at these. Worst case scenario, we're going to lose an engineer. I think our gun is okay, but their, their mini engineers are going to take a beating as well. Oh, we didn't like that. They're, they're off. They're off. They did not like that at all. Uh, they're down to less than half health. Oh, we took a beating, though. Who's that? Gene Bean, a swabby. Get in with the surgeon, Gene Bean. Everyone else, keep on doing what you're doing. This should be it. They're legging it. Oh, please miss. Oh, that wasn't too good. Uh, let's send another engineer to my heart light. And um, once again, please hit. That's what we need. Hittings. Oh, what are you firing at? Boom! Down you go. Your artillery tears the enemy can enter Peter Ribbons. Anything to salvage off, salvage off that one? You pick amongst the black and remain. Surely something has survived. Success. You haul from the wreckage a battered safe and call for a crowbar. Prizing it open, you find an undamaged cache of 89 guineas. That doesn't really seem like a lot, in all fairness. You know, considering what we've just done. What's going on now? Who's upset? Oh, no, it's our new engineer. All right. The elaborate feline visage never leaves her face. We've read that bit, haven't we? So, we've got a test of esoterica. Well, she's sitting on my bed. Let's have a word of it first. I've observed three things about your leadership in the time I've been here, says Judith. Her tone, as usual, on the sharp edge of mockery. Number one, you go through lower deck crew members like a lesser person would go through cigars. Number two, not enough flogging. And number three, you're quite happy to go gallivanting around the house solving your crew's problems. Oh, Captain, my shoe isn't tied, and it can only be tied again if we find the lost gold of shoelace. Or the lost gold shoelace, even. Well, I have a problem now, Padge. What are you going to do about it? Uh, happy to help, I guess. Oh, really? How very kind of you. Her voice has lost none of its amused sarcasm. I've been reading the news we gathered in the city of masks, she says. Now, I've discovered that Lord Reynard, another of the masked, of course, has been making certain insinuations about my character. Can you believe it? Slandering an innocent maiden like myself? Her laugh is tinkling glass. I am accustomed to his rakishness. But this is simply too far. Let us travel to the city of masks and see if we can persuade the scoundrel to retract his improper accusations. Yeah, I can do that. And I should think so too, says Judith. My honour as one of the masks is at stake. It is a very important matter. Alright, that's fine. Uh, I think we're done with you... Oh, we can ask her about the City of Glass. If I knew, I wouldn't tell you, Judith Lass. Judith, terrible words there. Judith Laughs. It is a delight to watch the great investigator at work. Why spoil it? She's a bit of a bitch, really, but there you go. Uh, so, 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 so. I mean, my esoteric is quite high anyway. So, I need... Um, a captain and just a pilot now isn't it captain and pilot what about me what's going on with me 
I can dream of clocks or I can dream of trees. I'm not happy to do any of those at the moment. I'd rather build up these. So with that being said, how much do we have? How many apprehensions now? 139? Wow. Okay. In which case... Let's bring uh who puts our grit up? You put our esoterica up. So do they put up what they represent? So we can't put our grit up anyway. So let's put our guts up whoa, 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 one. Can we put one up? We can. She puts on a pair of heavy leather gloves and begins pouring sizzling fluids together. Just to warn you, this might be a bit unimpressive, she says. Oh, or also it might explode. She adds to her mixture a dab of something meaty and foul-smelling, and then the explosion lifts you off your feet and deposits you upside down in the corridor outside. Char is completely enveloped in a ball of flame. Every glass in the room shatters, and a hundred strange liquids begin to burn holes through the floor and drip into the lower deck's crew's quarters below. Char picks up and dusts you off. Her hair is crisped and her eyebrows gone, but otherwise she seems unruffled. Not as high a yield as I hoped, she admits, but a bloody good result otherwise. And did you see the size of that fireball mucker? Okay, alright, fair enough. Well, that's, uh, well, that's a result. It is a result. So that takes us up to 40. Uh, yeah, I, I think I probably want to save this for grit. We're not doing good on grit. I mean, we could knock up insight for two I suppose just to round it up why not so a dance of ghosts her quarters are dark but for the blue light the ghosts provide she wordlessly extends a hand a slow waltz at first a more energetic fox trot to follow with the ghosts struggling to keep up the two of you dance around and between and through the phantoms chilly ectoplasm clinging to your limbs she raises her hands and the ghosts rush above her in a great in iridescent whirl then she bows low, and the spirits melt into fog at her feet. Rather invigorating, is it not? Valeria asks. Oh, okay, well, uh, let's do that once more, I guess. So that's that rounded out. What else we got? Uh, we could put some more... Uh, oh, if we put three into graft? You know what? Let's put four into esoterica. So... A little occultism. The occultist is just the blanket term we apply to everything we don't understand. If I wasn't willing to push these kinds of boundaries, I'd still be sitting in the Kelp Fortress worshipping people because they have differently shaped heads. Now, where did I put my candles? Pempusher has made his quarters into a library of squirming books. He picks a ritual from one, apparently at random, and draws a hexagon on the floor in chalk. My success rate is variable, I must admit, but I have a good feeling about this one. The ritual is long and complex, and Pempusher has to repeat it several times to engender any sort of effect at all. Did you hear that? he asked excitedly. Definitely some kind of whispering from beyond a hideous veil. How exciting. Nothing further seems to happen, however, and Penpusher finally gives up. So, that's one. Oh, you know what? After reading all that, I've completely forgotten how many we had. So, I need another three. So, one, two... Three, and that leaves us with 34, which we'll keep for the time being and we'll put into grit, I think. As and when. As and when. And, uh, yeah, we need to go down to... Where's the City of Masks then? It's... Actually, it's going to be on our way anyway. So well, let's head to the City of Engines. So down two more and across two. And then we'll call it quits there. Hall-wise, we're doing okay. I do feel like I need to pull our, up our grit as much as we can. Seeing as that is of attack power. No, don't want to be taking you on. You're one of those nasty ones. I'm not quite confident. I, I feel if we're going to be taking on anyone, we need to be doing it when we're at full health. But we do have a cairn here. There's nothing notable under the cairn except a shard of skull and a flint knife. Well, hey-ho, it's not a loss, I suppose. We go across now, don't we? Very disappointed by the money, though. I presume the bigger the kinetopede, the more money it will drop. And then one more, and that, sh that should be us done. Oh, yes. 
a new city, the City of Engines. And it's got a boat at it. Oh. And that is where we shall leave this episode, I think. Yeah, we'll leave it here. It's, it's a half an hour episode, so that's, that's good enough for me. So we'll, we'll pick it up in the City of Engines. Lots to explore, no doubt. Hopefully we can get rid of some of our cargo, which we can't seem to shift in any of the other larger cities. And uh, make a little bit of moolah and, and take it from there. But as I said, that'll be next time around. So thank you for watching. As always, a like is appreciated. And I'll catch you on the next one. Take it easy.